Hello, everyone, and welcome to this virtual demonstration of the Office of Space Commerce's Cloud-Based Open Architecture Data Repository, or OADR. I'm John Leslie with NOAA's Office of Communications, and I will facilitate today's briefing. You'll first hear from Dr. Steve Volz, Acting Assistant Secretary for Environmental Observation and Prediction, and the Assistant Administrator of NOAA's Satellite and Information Service. And then Scott Leonard, the Special Advisor to the Director of the Office of Space Commerce, will do the demonstration. After Scott concludes his presentation, we'll take your questions. And to ask a question, please find the Q&A box located at the bottom right of your screen, type in your name, your affiliation, your question, and who you would like to answer it. And now I'll hand it over to you, Dr. Volz, to begin. So thank you, John. And let me add my welcome to everyone tuning in for today's discussion. We all recognize the importance of the low Earth orbit for so many things. For Earth observations, both public and private, servicing everyone on the planet, security observations and operations, delivery of internet and space, the occupation of the space station and manned spaceflight, numerous science observations, as well as the, the gateway to geostationary orbits to the moon and beyond, and many other things I, I don't even know how to list right now. As important as the low Earth orbit real estate is, it is also very crowded, crowded with satellites and with the remnants of 60 plus years of human activity in space. All of you are very aware of the growing risks posed by these space debris and space traffic. The most significant increase in space objects has occurred over the last 15 years, from the 2007 anti-satellite test to the busy world that we live in today. While we have been largely concerned with the tens of thousands of inert debris, ob space debris objects from the past, the future may be dominated by active satellites. In fact, we expect on the order of 57,000 new satellites in orbit by the year 2030, including new missions like space tourism, satellite servicing, commercial space stations, and space-based internet. We must have a reliable, accurate system to track these satellites and the debris to ensure everyone has a necessary situational awareness to plan and to execute safe and reliable satellite operations. Over the past few years, the Office of Space Commerce within the Department of Commerce and NOAA has been a part of, of the discussions around the need for a modernized space situational awareness and notification system. The commercial space industry is the leading contributor to the growth of the space environment, and the United States needs an agency whose prime mission is to enhance the safety, stability, and sustainability of the environment for all of these new satellites to operate effectively. In 2020, we collaborated with the Department of Defense, with NASA, and with the commercial industry to conceptualize a vision of a space traffic management system. And in fiscal year 2021, Congress appropriated funds for the Office of Space Commerce to build that vision into an operational open architecture data repository prototype, and eventually to, de to design and deploy a space situation awareness service delivery for the nation. NOAA is bringing forward a prototype of that OADR today that will provide operational space situational awareness, including conjunction alert services, will incorporate, incorporate diverse sources of data, and will offer an interactive platform for academia, government, and industry to innovate and to promote new services for this activity. Within the OADR, all interested parties will be able to advance the science of space situational awareness and to create new tools and technology to improve safety and sustainability in space operations. This prototype, which you'll hear from Scott Leonard in a few minutes, which has been thoroughly tested against more than 20,000 objects orbiting in space and, use, and has using federal and commercial track, tracking data as inputs, leverages modern technologies and will be enhanced through further collaboration or continuous collaboration, I should say, with the commercial space industry. We have designed the prototype that starts with the system we have today and without interruption or disruption of that system's deliveries, will provide a path to a new, more capable SSA service capacity that will grow in capability over time. We leveraged existing contracts within three federally funded research and development centers, Aerospace MITRE and MIT Lincoln Labs, as well as the University of Texas expertise to develop this prototype and also to establish a proving grounds demonstration 
where users of space tracking data and applications can develop new technologies and explore new ideas in a risk-free environment and in a way that is leads to further incorporation into the operational service. When I hand it over to Scott Leonard, he'll demonstrate a working prototype OADR, what a working prototype OADR can display. It's a cloud-based data repository, and it takes 15 to 20 minutes to process the tens of thousands of objects we've tracked over a two-month period. You, you will see how adding different kinds of data from government and commercial sources can dramatically improve the information we get and the services we can provide. Now, we will not be running a real-time sim simulation today or solution today, but look forward to working with the multiple stakeholders in this technology and operational space in the coming months and years. So with that, I'll turn it over to Scott. And after the demonstration is complete, we will be taking your questions. Over to you, Scott. My name is Scott Leonard. I am the technical director for the Office of Space Commerce at NOAA's National Environmental Satellite Data and Information Service. Last year, NOAA built a ground system prototype of the Open Architecture Data Repository, or OADR, as a proof of concept of how NOAA's Office of Space Commerce could conduct the Space Situational Awareness, or SSA, mission on behalf of the United States government. This prototype leverages modern technologies and would be enhanced through further collaboration with the space industry. I'd like to take this time to thank Aerospace, MITRE, and MIT Lincoln Labs for their support to build this prototype and the proving ground, where users of space tracking data can develop new technologies and explore ideas in a risk-free environment. We also reached out to industry and are grateful for the feedback and participation by companies who offered examples of commercial technologies which could be integrated into the overall picture. This ground system prototype was operating in a cloud environment and offers flexibility, scalability, mission adaptability, and long-term affordability. The containerized architecture creates opportunities for U.S. companies, especially small businesses, to play an innovative role in space situational awareness. You're going to see several displays of an operating OADR prototype. It's a cloud-based data repository and processes tens of thousands of space objects within 15 minutes using satellite data over a two-month period. I'll discuss how adding different kinds of data from government and commercial sources dramatically improves the space situational awareness information we can provide to the U.S. space community. So how did we get down to this path? Space activities are growing very rapidly. The video you are seeing shows a historical perspective of all the space objects orbiting the Earth starting in 1957 with the launch of Sputnik to the present day. As the video continues to play, you'll see the most significant increase in space objects occurred over the last 10 years. In fact, we expect over 50,000 new satellites in orbit by the year 2030 along with new missions like space tourism, satellite servicing, commercial space stations, and space-based internet. Over the past three years, the government discussed the need for a modernized ground system to provide space situational awareness information to the U.S. space community. The commercial space industry is a leading contributor to the growth of the space environment. The United States needed a new ground system to enhance the safety, stability, and sustainability of all these new satellites. Last year, the Office of Space Commerce collaborated with the Department of Defense, NASA, and the commercial industry to conceptualize a vision of this modernized SSA system. And in fiscal year 21, Congress appropriated funding for us to build that vision into an OADR prototype. This ground system prototype allows us to explore how to provide this SSA basic services, incorporate diverse sources of data, and offer a platform from academia, government, and industry to innovate. Within the OADR system, we'll be able to advance the science of our space environment and create new tools and technologies to improve the safety and sustainability in space. 
You're going to see some displays from this working modernized ground system. We thoroughly tested the system against over 20,000 objects orbiting in space. I'll talk about the architecture, the types of data we tested, and show specific examples of our collision warnings and the information inside that can be provided 24-7 to the U.S. space community. Now, many of the requirements for this ground system design were based on Space Policy Directive 3, which mandated a new operational system to provide basic space situation awareness services. This cloud-based architecture is an open, scalable, and transparent to reduce the risk and lay a foundation for developing advanced services. Scalability is critical, as we know more satellites are planned to launch in the future. We need a ground system that can accommodate the expected growth. This design is also adaptable to support new technology, advanced algorithms, and diverse data sets like space weather data or satellite telemetry. This type of design allows for easy, periodic system upgrades and IT security patches to ensure our operations are reliable, safe, and secure. The agility of the design promotes data sharing and data interoperability for collaboration with not only the U.S., but the international space community. Here's the process flow of our on-orbit collision safety service. Diverse data sources securely ingest into the OADR. There are auditing tools labeled QA to calibrate, validate, and monitor all data entering the OADR and after the OADR calculates the orbit solutions. We screen all the objects in space that were received from the Space Object Catalog, which is maintained by the Space Force. Then we provide an assessment of potential collisions based on risk and probability. The OADR uses modern cloud-native architecture using containerized services. Containerized software packages combine the application software with the software required to operate in the cloud into a single package called a container. Each major element of the OADR system runs in a container that is developed and deployed in a DevOps pipeline. This approach allows the OADR to easily scale out to handle more data. The OADR architecture provides several advantages. Containers can be easily ported to run on almost any computer system and are more efficient than virtual machines. Containerized software is easy to develop, test, and deploy. By running software modules in separate isolated environments, containers improve security and reliability. A security breach or software fault in one container does not easily propagate to other containers. Combining containers with microservices also improve reliability and enable developers to update one part of the system without affecting other parts. The OADR software platform is a data lake built on open source software such as Kubernetes, Argo Workflows, and Hive. It is designed to automate data management and accelerate development of computer intensive applications that use large amounts of data. The data system separates concerns so that a casual user does not need to understand the whole system to do the job. By using an infrastructure as code approach, the data system can be easily deployed to any cloud service provider or on-prem hardware cluster. The OADR prototype was tested with real-world operational data from the Department of Defense and the commercial industry. In the current SSA system operated by the Department of Defense, satellite tracking data is collected by the 18th Space Control Squadron using their own radars and telescopes located around the world. For this demonstration, this ground system used over 60 days of data on 20,000 space objects. This visual displays a real-time map of the objects in Earth's orbit. There are over 4,850 active satellites, and by the year 2030, there will be more than 50,000 active satellites expected to be operating. As the number of objects in space increase, the risk of potential collisions increase. The quality and accuracy of our SSA products depends on the frequency 
and the precision of satellite data. Constant and timely orbit measurements are necessary to maintain the quality of these orbit solutions. On the globe, we show a satellite orbiting the Earth. The Department of Defense is tracking this satellite with their radars, which you can see on the globe in the graphic. The data is depicted here as blue dots, and this constitutes the current primary government source of SSA information. The commercial industry is also tracking this satellite with their radars. Commercial providers have demonstrated the ability to contribute quality observations, which is depicted here as yellow dots. On this map, radar and optical sensors are representing their location around the globe. The blue color represents the Department of Defense sensors, and the commercial sensors are represented in yellow. As we look around this rotating globe, you notice in the Northern Hemisphere, there is good data coverage from both Department of Defense and the commercial sensors. But in the Southern Hemisphere, commercial sensors significantly improve the coverage in this region by over 50% and expect this percentage to increase as more commercial radars are built. The notional cones show the coverage of each radar. The majority of our initial OADR data testing used Department of Defense data. To integrate commercial data with DOD data, MIT Lincoln Laboratory developed an OADR data fusion engine that incorporated both data sources. By leveraging both sources of satellite tracking data, the OADR can improve tracking of space debris to improve more accurate conjunction warnings, which is the biggest threat to satellite operations. Additionally, the continued growth in the commercial space sensing sector presents an opportunity to expand the coverage, diversity, and timeliness of data beyond the traditional government capability. Let's walk through how the OADR ground system works. As information flows into the system, standard astrodynamics algorithms are applied to fuse the multiple data sources into orbital solutions. The OADR produces several SSA products for the user, which includes plots, 3D animations, and recommended mitigation actions. For this ground system prototype, we're using DOD algorithms, but the OADR can accommodate all other algorithms in parallel, like NASA or a commercial vendor, as we talked about containers. The updated solutions are stored in the database. We can use these inputs to do other SSA services like launch support, object reentry, and space debris awareness. We're going to focus today on conjunction warnings. We create an orbital prediction from these solutions on every single object. We screen all objects based on risk and probability to identify a possible conjunction warning. Automated warning notifications are created and distributed to a satellite operator if a potential conjunction are detected to allow enough time for them to maneuver the satellite. A conjunction warning is similar to a hurricane weather forecast, but in this case, we're providing a space forecast for your satellite. A hurricane notification displays a probability cone that continually changes as new data is obtained. A conjunction is similar. These are probability ellipsoids around two space objects. If more accurate and timely data is used in the calculations, then it reduces the uncertainty and these ellipsoids will decrease in size. Local emergency managers are faced with a similar problem as satellite operators. They have to make a decision based on a mission-centric timeline. Either evacuate people in the case of a hurricane, or we maneuver the satellite. After conjunction screening is done, conjunctions over the next five days are displayed on our OADR web interface. This scatter plot shows the probability of collision on the vertical axis over five days. Each blue dot represents a conjunction. By hovering over a dot, we get specific information about the conjunction. Here is the high-level information provided in a conjunction warning notification to satellite operators. In this notification, we see debris 
from a late 1960s rocket body and a NASA science satellite launched in 2014. Let's take a look at some examples of conjunctions and we'll show you our 3D animation that the OADR ground system uh, produces. These video animations are physics based and fully interactive. This is Odin, a Swedish astrophysics satellite, and debris from a Chinese satellite. The yellow banner at top indicates that this event has a medium probability collision. We can pause the simulation to the nearest closest approach. In the upper left hand corner, we see the conjunction occurs over the Arctic, with Alaska and Canada to the right and Russia to the left. These views can be rotated and zoomed. As we zoom in the lower level left, we see after zooming in quite a bit, it's so difficult to see the quality of ellipsoids for these objects. That's showing that our orbit estimates for both objects are actually very good. We can run the simulation backwards in time to replay the event and look at it from different angles. Let's show a different example. This display shows a conjunction between the GRACE follow-on spacecraft and a Chinese spacecraft. The red banner indicates a high probability of collision. Let's zoom in. The green bar is for scale, showing 5 kilometers. The yellow and pink ellipsoids represent the quality of measurement of the estimated position for the two satellites. Remember, the smaller the better. Here, the data quality is much lower, so the bubbles are very large. Let's take a look at what happens when we add more accurate data to this same scenario. We show now the same event with more accurate data. By adding the additional more accurate data, we're able to generate a more precise orbit. Now, immediately you can see the banners yellow, indicating a lower probability collision. And the bubbles in the lower left-hand quadrant are so small that you can't even see them. Our analysis shows that adding more accurate data reduces the probability even further. This OADR ground system prototype was validated by NASA last year. These are side-by-side -side comparisons showing the same results between the current DOD system and the OADR prototype within the probability collision, total missed distance, and the conjunction plane. Another component of this ground system is the OADR Proving Ground. This is a development environment to support research and development projects to promote the advancement of space science and technology. The Proving Ground is critical to increase our understanding of the space environment, which include the characterization of small debris, exploring diverse types of space data, like space weather data to increase orbit solution accuracy, building cutting-edge algorithms, and other models necessary to improve our SSA capabilities. It's like a playground for academia and space researchers to collaborate and experiment in a controlled environment. All data stays in the development environment. We can manage use, user access to any of the data. Access and control with a full audit log, which can be also provided to any of the data providers to our system. The opportunity to work with diverse data sets will ideally position the OADR to be a center of excellence to ensure the U.S. continues to be the global leader in space. The OADR prototype produced accurate and actionable results. This cloud-based ground system enables space analysts to see the big picture of space environmental forecasts days in the future, and, and we find ways to prevent a potential collision. Leveraging this type of modernized ground system design will enable the Office of Space Commerce to develop the operational system in the future. Thank you so much for your time. Yeah, Teresa Hitchens breaking defense news uh, to uh, Scott Leonard. Uh, what margin of error was the prototype able to meet in predicting conjunctions? Also, given that uh, there are a number of commercial companies already providing this service, do you intend to buy their service to Augment? Great. Well, thank you for the uh, question. So, um, so as we 
brought Na NASA in, as you saw in the presentation, we, we were able to validate that in the prototype, our architecture and design was meeting the same quality of what DOD currently does. As we move forward and, and we collaborate with the commercial industry, we are certainly, uh, because I talked a little bit about the containerized architecture, we have lots of opportunities to bring in some of the software uh, technologies, the more advanced areas into our into our OADR system. And and so in that perspective, we can take advantage of some of that. To, to your question about other commercial companies, uh, we, we do see there are a lot of companies out there that are providing some of the services, but as we looked, it's not a totality of everything. So I believe it's essential for the US government to provide this core level of SSA information that's reliable, consistent, sustained. And we also are doing this in a free and open basis as we bring in the different capabilities of commercial businesses. So, and the other, furthermore, we talked a little bit about the proving ground. And I think this is a great opportunity for the US space commercial industry to really come in and try to innovate, enhance. And their way, remember that really does create new business and opportunities and jobs in the space industry. Thank you for that question, Teresa. Our next question is from Sandra Irwin, Space News. Uh, what are the next steps to make this system operational? And the follow-up is, when will SSA transition from DOD to uh, Office of Space Commerce? I'll go ahead and take that one, and then, Scott, you can add to it. Um, so, the as we've described, we have taken the pilot to a prototype and the initial next steps are, are really, this is the first step of those next steps, which is engaging with the larger community. Um, as Scott defined, identified, there are a number of places, including the proving grounds, but just in general, demonstrating the expansion of this prototype to include the commercial sector in both in data um, and in applications development through the proving grounds as we get to a, a more full, as we demonstrate this and we improve the, the prototype that we've already defined. Um, as far as the uh, the transition, I would say that the the DoD is will continue with the mission it has, um, and we anticipate the with the proposal that we have in place and working with our sponsors inside the federal government and and the budget side to have initial operating capacity of a operational civilian space situational awareness capability by 2024, and uh, initial operation as we call it IOC. And then a next step of, of maturity with an FOC, a, fi uh, a final or the next set of maturity for operational capacity in 2025. Um, so, Scott, did you want to add anything to that? No, I think you covered it well, Steve. Thank you. Nope. Okay, great. Uh, okay. We have another question uh, for Dr. Voltz. This is from Marcia Smith, spacepolicyonline.com. What is the intended in state for OADR and how far along does this get you? Is this a baby step, milestone, inflection point? I think uh, I like the way you phrase that as baby step, milestone, inflection point. Can you do all three at once? I think you probably can. I, I think we've been talking in this space for a long, in, sorry about that, the pun, um, This in this conversation for a long time about how do we prepare for the future of of crowds crowding in space and and we're, we're the future is now um and i think this is a, a very important milestone and the and the acknowledgement of of the of the need um for a fully operational and highly capable civil space situational awareness capability to, to meet the needs of the community of both the existing federal community in some cases but more off more more wholly the commercial sector, which as Scott showed, is anticipating tens of thousands of launch, wherever you're seeing those satellites in space right now. So this is a, a milestone in the commitment to the delivery of an operational civil space, um, uh, space situation awareness capability. Um, and as far as the, uh, the baby step, it is a prototype. It's not a, we're not dropping on the community, the end state right now. Uh, we fully recognize, as as the previous question just had, there are already people in this space in the commercial sector. What's their role? How are they going to survive or thrive or or change their their deliveries in the coming space? Now, what we have establishing a federal service or a federal capability. 
So I think the um, the the next step, um, the, the end state of OADR is a public-private shared space for operating and providing critical space situation awareness to the community in a sustained and in, and in ongoing and improving way over time, improving by greater radar you know, um, tracking assets so we have better ephemeris and better predictions of conjunction, as Scott showed in that one example, improving in the types of services that are provided, um, in whether it's, as he mentioned, launch, launch colas or um, conjunctions on launch attempts, um, re-entry issues, uh, operational principles for, for a small, small set may be different than for a space hotel. So the shared, the future space though is going to be a public and private. We do not expect the, the SSA provided by this Office of Space Commerce and the Department of Commerce will satisfy every need and every user. We fully expect, as we see in, in many other federal delivered services, there will be a rich and active commercial sector providing enhanced and tailored services for marquee customers or for other customers who want a different set of products and outputs. But they base that on an undercurrent, an underlayment or a baseline support service that we provide as the essential SSA capabilities and information for the community. And then the commercial sector working with us um, in collaboration, but also on their own, can then exploit those more richly, uh, the, the, the fuller market of space situational activities and, and information products for a, a growing risk of space providers in, in the low Earth orbit and beyond. Okay, thank you, Dr. Volz. Okay, the uh, next question is from Bill Carey of Aviation Week. This is for uh, Scott Leonard. What is the next development milestone for the OADR? Sure, so cu currently we are working, uh, completing our requirements for the operational uh, OADR and our acquisition strategy. And so we're moving forward with that. So that's probably our big next milestone as we, we develop. Um, I do want, I do want to point out that, you know, when we build this system, you know, one of the things that I think is really critical here, and if I could just describe the OADR when we become operational, it's really SSA automation. I mean, I think that's the big advancement that we're going to bring to this, you know, cause we're, we're, we've designed our software platform. We're going to go out, reach out to industry um, for some uh, acquisitions to show that our prototype can be done in a large scale and automated fashion. And really, it's about automating data management, accelerating development. And, and as Steve had mentioned, we talked in the video, that proven ground is going in parallel with the operations. So uh, this year, we're finalizing all of our requirements and completing that. And we'll be moving uh, very, very quickly in, in 23, awarding multiple uh, acquisitions to, to build the system operational. Okay, our next question is from Marcia Smith uh, to Scott Leonard. You said the commercial companies are providing substantially increased coverage in the Southern Hemisphere. Are you encouraging, facilitating them to focus their resources there? So, uh, so Marsha, just so you know, uh, as part of NOAA, NOAA actually has contracts with some of these commercial companies for our own satellite fleet. Uh, and we had found that not only we're encouraging, we're promoting, and we've been reaching out, working with them for collaboration. I, I think it's important I, that we mentioned a little bit that space debris is really getting the assessment to how we deal with space junk is all about how many satellite trackers, radars are out there. I, I think that's really important. And so, yes, we are reaching out. We've talked to several of the vendors. We, we know the services to provide. We think there's a benefit added to collaborate and bring that commercial data in there. And we create fused products with what DOD has already done very well. We take, we'll take things to the next level. And so I, I think that's really important. I think you know when you look at the the what our biggest threat is, it, it's really the, the space junk. I mean, to bring this large scalable cloud OADR, we plan the commercial, we purchase the commercial tracking data. We're going to organize all the space junk so we can lower the operating risk for the whole satellite community. 
and because this is our biggest threat. So we are absolutely working with them to, to integrate and not only their commercial data, but some of their software technology that we have seen that can really add a value and advance some of the space science out there when we go operational. Yeah, and if I can add to that, um, uh, to, to Scott's point there, um, he rightly focuses on the, the threat to our satellites in space right now is largely debris. Um, because one, they're, they're often hard to track. Um, there, there's lots of them up there, tens of thousands of objects, and it only takes a very minute object to really damage or destroy a satellite, op an operating satellite. So um, the commercial sector are better informed than, uh, than we are in what the market demands. And in his case, the market is understanding and awareness. So they, they can see just as well as we is that, that the uh, Southern hemisphere is sparsely populated with tracking. Similar as we've seen in other areas where the northern hemisphere for weather side, we got lots of weather obs in the northern hemisphere, but not much in the south. So that when you look at a whole collective system, it's the system enhancements that uh, really drives us to look to enhance, increase the, the southern hemisphere observations. But I would say that that is the risk that tr the primary risk now is orbital debris tracking. I think the challenge for us as part of this um, the space situation awareness and, and community engagement is the future, which is active operations of those 50 plus thousand satellites so it's as we get into orbit and we're there are popular orbits more popular than some is how do we work together so that we don't interact or interfere with each other um and and that's going to be the coordination part of the ssa and, and and traffic management in the long term of how we define the right space norms the right operating principles and the, the the dialogue between the operators and the government and our service and the the operators and each other and that's the ongoing that's really the, the rich discussion topic and area over the coming year to three years is how to define those space norms for operations of these very densely populated um, constellations of operating systems okay great thank you uh Waiting for the next question. Okay, let's see. Uh, from Bill Carey, um, this is for you, Dr. Boltz. Uh, has there been any participation by the FAA Office of Commercial Space Transportation in the OADR development? Uh, so thank you, Bill. I'll give a short answer and then I'll let, I'll let Scott elaborate. The short answer is yes. Um, over the last year, we've been working with all of the, his, the traditional partners, the players in this space, FAA, NASA, NOAA, DOD, um, and a number of DOC entities who are players in this as well. But, but Scott can speak more fully to the engagement with the FAA Office of Transportation. Scott, sure. go Thanks, ahead. Steve. So I think one of the important things, Bill, is <clears throat> when we talked about the the actual OADR uh, repository, the data repository, we, we kind of focused the um, demonstration really on on-orbit collisions. But I, I did want to mention that once we bring in this data repository, that containerized architecture for software, these, these are really kind of like a, a iPhone apps. We can do other types of services and, and I've talked to the FAA about that and, and, and some of these services that they are currently working on for licensing and, and what happens when objects re-enter the atmosphere onto the earth, these are services that we can provide as a, a precursor beginning to have the FAA move into a whole another level of, of complexity and greater awareness. So things like uh, pre-launch screening for uh, satellites that are about to launch or these objects that re-enter the atmosphere, where are they going to go? So these are things that we believe the OADR is really a cross-governmental solution to bring in our uh, government partners to provide these services. So, you know, some of the basic services that <clears throat> we're looking at with the FAA, as I mentioned, the disposal re-entry sensors, you know, so what's happening, where is it going? And then we talked a little bit about the pre-launch. And I'll add one, two, two points. One is a shameless plug is that at next week's 24th um, FAA commercial space conference, um, we're going to be there as well talking about these activities. That's the plug. The second point is um, we mentioned earlier how there are commercial players in this field right now and our introduction of a civil space um, federal service is going to 
inter- will change some of the landscape and require some adjustments on both sides, and we expect that to happen. I think that's true in the federal side as well. FAA um, has the responsibility for launch and deorbit. Um, and as we step up the services for the the other piece, the middle piece, the operations, there will be natural connections we need to make with the FAA on both the beginning and the end of life, as Scott referenced there. So there will be adjustments on both sides of our programs as we go forward. And we are definitely working closely with the FAA to make sure these are, again, seamless to the operator and the user um, and in and, and the experience they have in working in the SSA. Okay, great. Um, our next question is from uh, Teresa Hitchens, uh, Breaking Defense. Uh, this is for you, Dr. Bolts. Are you working with uh, DOD with regard to the requirement setting process for the operational capability? Um, also, have you formally asked for input from industry, uh, such as through an RFI to develop these requirements? So uh, to the first question, yes. Uh, we, as we mentioned earlier, the, the, the initial intention of this service, that is a, a seamless transition from what the community has been used to uh, now so that there's no abrupt step function in performance expectations, delivery of products and services um, as we go forward. So we've been, the DOD is, is an active participant in this, and we've had a number of briefings and interactive dialogues over the past for prior to this year, prior to the last year, but but ongoing even more so as the prototype has been set up. And I'll ask Scott to speak to that a little more fully. Um, the second piece is that um, we have been working internally to make sure that the federal approach is well coordinated, We're talking to the Department of Defense, to NOAA, I mean, to NASA, to um, the National Space Council, the FAA, et cetera, um, as we plan this rollout. And the next step, um, as, as we're eager to do, is to go through RFIs with the commercial sector, with industry, um, for a number of those um, and ex- those capabilities that Scott mentioned in the OADR that we fully, we know there's experience and there's research taking place and innovation taking place in industry. We want to have that engagement. And that's, you should be seeing an RFIs coming out within the next week, even on a number of these questions. And, and Scott, I'll turn it over to you if you want to add anything. <clears throat> Oh, I was just going to say uh, some of my pr- past experience before I was with NOAA, I had spent 24 years in the Department of Defense in this specific mission area. So I have a lot of experience and, it, and it's just a fundamental key to, to continue our collaboration with DOD as, as we move to transition the commercial sector of what DOD does and have them focus more on space defense, the collaboration, the ongoing commitment that we both need to do is important for both sides of space defense and to provide good space forecasts for the commercial industry. So that that not only goes on, uh, on, it goes on on a weekly uh, basis. And so we also expect to be getting their data uh, coming into our system as much as our products are going out to them so to make sure that the authorized satellite catalog is always in synchronized or we're on the same page. And that goes the same thing with NASA. NASA is also a, a close partner. And of course, we mentioned in the previous question with FAA. And when you look at these groups, there were key to collaborate the entire thing. So this system is not just a, a one process. It develops across the government and supports the, not only the U.S. space industry, but the, also the global space industry. Yeah, and to the NASA point that Scott just mentioned, um, one of the key features, and I think the great features of the OADR that we're describing is this proving ground. Um, NASA has been doing research in orbital debris analysis, trajectory fl- planning, debris conjunction uh, forecasting, et cetera, and will continue to do that. That's It's innate. It's a part of their core mission because they have so much activity in space. So what we provide with this Proving Ground is a place for, it's sort of a delivery place for some of those research developments into the next two improvements in the services. Um, NASA not as an operational agency, um, but is in research and development. Now we'll have a place for those those um, best ideas to transition into an operational service for the general public through this OADR and through our SSA. Um, and it also is a place, a single proving or a meeting place, if you will, for the commercial sector to work and see how those the different innovations can take place, can be merged into an operational system and allowing the, the commercial sector to bring their own ideas in, test them against the baseline government system, and then go off on their own if they would like to use that uh, that sort of interoperability tested application and then add it as, so it's more, 
it's beneficial now as an additive service service for companies that may want more than the baseline service can provide. Okay, yeah, uh, we have one more question from Marcia Smith. Uh, this is to you, Dr. Boltz. Are there any plans to move the Office of Space Commerce out of NESDIS to the NOAA Administrator's Office as recommended by the Senate Appropriations Committee? And would that, uh, I'm sorry, would that help move OADR along more uh, quickly by getting higher level attention and resources? So thanks, Marsha, for the question. Um, clearly, as we described it, the importance of this mission is such that it requires a larger visibility, a higher visibility, if you will, and senior level administration and policy sort of ownership and 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 uh, concurrence or in, in um, and support. Um, with that, there is a recognition, as identified in the the Napa report and in, and in the congressional language, that it needs to be moved to a, a higher level of accountability, if you will, or visibility. Um, we are working within, and and the the department recognizes that, and the the undersecretary of NOAA recognizes that it, this is an important NOAA and not an agency and department level capability. Uh, we are in the process of coordinating the uh, the trend the organizational approach for the OSC at that higher level of visibility and authority. I can't I can't state what exactly that is. We have to work that with the the uh, authorizing appropriating committees of the Congress, but we do expect this to get and and it has the highest visibility um, daily. In fact, with the undersecretary at NOAA and with um, significant interactions at the department level. So there is a clear understanding that this must have that level of of senior support and um, authority. Um, and I think the with the FY23 budget in particular, you'll see the some of the details of that reestablishment of the role and the and the pr priority, the primacy of OSC as a growing uh, federal concern within the Department of Commerce and within NOAA. I can't go beyond that in details because it's in it's sort of uh, tied up in the budget and in, in the authorization questions within the department, but it clearly will get that higher visibility. Okay. Um, are there any more questions? If you have a question, go ahead and type it in the uh, box and submit it, and uh, we will address it. Okay, if there are no more questions, uh, we'll go ahead and wrap it up. Uh, thank you, Dr. Steve Voltz and Scott Leonard for your time today, and thank you all for tuning in. Thank you. Okay, thanks for everybody for dialing in.